Good morning. My name is Scott Rutledge, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call. We are seeing lots of green arrows around the world as markets seem to believe that Ukraine is close to a ceasefire. We have the DAX and the rest of the region up about 1%, while over in Asia, the FXI seems to have sustainability through 2014 eyes, and the Nikkei doesn't look too shabby either. Yes, uh, I woke up this morning because the dog was barking, mm -hmm. and uh, I looked at my news feed, just because what I do is actually at 410, and you saw the news, you know, ceasefire, blah, 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 all of a sudden futures are up, you know, 10 handles, and it was like, wow, okay, that's pretty cool, mm -hmm. considering, you know, the market's been acting well. And then I think I walked the dog, it came back, and then it says, oh, Putin doesn't say, you know, the ceasefire is, is going to happen. You know, but then anyway, uh, things pretty much got sustained. Sorry about the dog walking story, but it was mm -hmm. just funny how just like the head, like, you know, volatility. That quickly can happen just Tw while you're walking the dog. Right. The Twitter sphere is so fast. Right. I think it hit the media t 20 minutes after it was on Twitter, but mm -hmm. whatever. You know, I think the street does believe that something's going to happen quick and might have been even looking for a reason to go up. Most of Europe, like you said, Brittany, is up over 1%. You look at the EWG just to, you know, talk about what we've been watching there. This was the low still held higher okay it's still well below the 200 day well below broken areas but you know what it's working its way i'm not as interested as i was the last time but i'm looking at it for sediment it starts to make its way back above 29.50 or even closer to here you'll see some bears backing off on europe but what we have been talking about is the fxi and how you could put some money to work there that was in our second half thesis and our first half here's when it broke above its trend line it's been holding up here and now it does look as if for the first time, it's going to open above uh, the 2014 high, which comes in at 41.50. And as far as Japan, talked about how this 15-month um, consolidation is probably almost over. Well, here you go. Here's your 15-month consolidation. You have a gap up, okay, right above it. So now at least if you're long it or you're long going into it, you have a gap and a point of reference to trade against. And that's right here. So if you're long this, as long as it stays above... Uh, 5073 stay the course because it's been in such a big range this move could actually last well and speaking of fluctuation in our markets s p s p x futures were up about nine handles at one point now have fluctuated to about six to seven handles up but either way looking for a positive start this morning yes and you know the actual indice has been here for five days so it's not as extended as as it feels because in the last month we were 100 handles lower so if it wants to gap and go today it has, you know, the right ingredients. And you look here at the chart and you will see, you know, it's still just hanging around here. It hasn't really done much, almost even back from, you know, August 21st. So it is hugging the eight day. Um, in order for some traction to take place, it's going to have to get above uh, 2006 and stay above 2006. If it opens above and comes back below and can't rally on this news, then I think it'll give us some clues that the market is tired. But at this point, there's been a lot of good action. So hopefully, you know, even if the markets do continue to digest, you know, we could find the individual sectors and names. Well, let's turn our attention to bonds because yesterday bonds got blindsided with an island top, which could ignite a new trend. Scott, walk us through that. Well, an island top or even an island bottom is, is like a blindsided situation that you don't see where people are trapped on an island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Makes Gilligan's sense. Island, they were stranded there for a while. It mm -hmm. happens in stocks too. You might just get stranded there and have no way out. So you have to figure out, you know, what do you want to do quickly? And uh, sometimes it does ignite a new move, sometimes. But at least, again, you have points of reference. You look at the chart of the TLTs, and this is the trend. It's been in a very strong trend all the way down to start the year. So you're hanging out, these, you know, you're hanging out up here along the TLTs thinking the coast is clear, and then boom, that happens. That's a big gap down that traps all the people who are long here or even long in here. And now people don't know what to do. So at this point, what you have here is um, a huge gap to trade against. Typically, a big gap like this, especially when you see it in stocks, leads to a directional move in the direction of the gap. So right now, we closed in the lows near the 21-day. I do think you know, we could at least test the 50-day, which is 114.77. So you know, at this particular point, you have to figure out your commitment to this vehicle. Hopefully, you didn't have too much because that rally was, you know, along the tooth as it is. Well, so then the inverse of that is the TBTs, which look like they found a, bo a bottom. Well, it, at this point, it, this could start that. And I know people have been looking for exposure to the TBTs. We've tried it a few times this year and got chopped up. So now you have another gap to use. And, uh, you know, same thing here. This is the island bottom. You go to the chart of the TBTs, you'll see it's been trending lower for, for most of uh, this year, if not the majority of it, actually, yeah. Well, anyway, all the way from 80 down to here, it's a long move. 
So, you know, look where it is now. It doesn't look like much, but you do have this gap. And if you're looking to be long something just in case rates go higher, just as a hedge, now, hopefully yesterday, maybe you bought some verse 5548. If this gap were to hold and digest and show commitment above it, perhaps finally you get a more sustainable move or even just a move for, as a trade back to this 50 day, which comes in around 5885. And not only that, but if rates continue higher, people will look to the banks for some better action. Names like Goldman Sachs, which do you think it looks poised to break 180? About two weeks ago, we talked about the strength in the banks when they ignited. Now they're trying to follow through. And I think there could be a trade through 180. You look here, we talked about it yesterday. Chart looks good. This is when it ignited above this 176. It's knocking on the old high. The question is, will it have enough power to get through it? So it's really 180, 181. You know, starting and staying above yesterday's high of 180, 21. You know, would get some traders interested. Meanwhile, Morgan held above that 33 area that, if you remember, Scott had deemed as important. Do you think it could continue? Well, this th that 33 area, you know how many times it tried to go above and failed? Finally, it's rested above it for over a week. So that tells me you see some commitment there. So if you look, here's a chart of Morgan. Let me get this out of the way. And this was that 33, 33.50 area couldn't get above, and then it did, and now digested. So I do think there's a continuation move. So for, for this one, you know, maybe above yesterday's high of 34.65, and you know, it could be 35-ish for option expiration. Well, speaking of holding for a week, Citigroup's been above 50 for about a week. Do you think, well, what would you say its next obstacle might be? Well, that was the first one and went above, sustained above, so now the recent pivot high. So if you look at Citigroup, it's been lagging a little bit, but it could play catch up when it wants to. And here is that 50 area that it ignited through, hit a little peak, let the eight day catch up. So it's flagging. Um, I'd say, you know, you have yesterday's high of 51.98, and then if it were to get above 52.40, um, you could see continuation. I do think at some point, why not? This thing should be able to get back to at least, you know, 55, which is another nice percentage along the way. How about Bank of America? It just had its target lowered by Baird to 17 from 18. What are your thoughts there? It's kind of poor timing for a downgrade, especially since, and what are you, 18 to 17? Yeah. So uh, it might not participate as much today as it would have if it didn't happen, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's going to make it fall apart. Uh, you look at the chart of Bank of America. Um, it did ignite on the settlement talks and then held in there and turned higher yesterday. I guess if you're long and you're worried about it, be long versus 1599. If it were to hold above that, I think it's okay. The next obstacle here for this one would be right here at, um, what is that? That's uh, 1648. All right, let's switch gears and go in the trenches now with high beta tech, which is still providing opportunities. We have Apple another day closer to that September 9th media event and still grinding higher. Yes, and sometimes moves are phenomenal and you trim and trail your way out of a big size of it, which I've done. I'm down, I'm down to very small, but you look at the size of the move and, you know, it makes sense. This was, uh, what, in April and then all these uh, patterns along the way, one right here, one right here, one above the prior pivot and now feels a little tired and a little choppy. I'm trying to stay with it. You know, who knows what happens today, but if it goes below 102.72, I think, you know, I'll be out of the stock. I have a call spread that I have to wait till September 20th. And then, you know, I'd rather see a move back to the eighth day to buy it. You know, all the talk about the iCloud and the celebrities and this and that, you know, has contained the move, but ultimately it's acting really well. And hopefully you've had a, a, a decent sized position because guys on the VTF seem very happy with it. All right, and we saw Google finally wake up. What level do you say it needs to get above to pick up some momentum? Now, this one I've been eyeing because it's been lethargic. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I bought it two days ago. I actually have more today coming in than I had yesterday because it turned up. You look at the chart. Uh, I do think that at some point it takes out this area, you know, and right now it just turned up. So if you take a closer look, you will see. Um, you know, I talk about my strategy sometimes. And here you get like a feeler. And then this is your kind of confirmation. So, you know, you go to like maybe a, a tier one. And then it really, if it, it really has room to up here. Hopefully it clears this 597, and then if it does, then real momentum comes back. For right now, it's just building, but at least if you bought the dip, you know, you're, you're in a better shape than buying strength if it doesn't hold tight. Do you still believe Google will be one to watch this fall? Yes, and I think mm -hmm. at some point it takes out that 610, and it could see 630, 640. Not, the market hasn't confirmed that yet, so that's why you want to keep it on the right. radar. And I am long some, and hopefully it acts well enough to stay with it for that. All right. Well, how about Baidu? Baidu, we did see Ignite yesterday. What is next for it? You know, this has been a long consolidation since earnings and looks good. It was on the Red the Roll Access game plan, and I got long some yesterday for a trade. People on the VTF caught it pretty early, and look at that. Nice igniting day one. Big day one, and it's up pre-market. 
So your next point of reference is right here. If we were to get above and stay above this, uh, you could see new highs. And this was a 10 for one stock split. This stock is really 2020. That's why I say, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's the same, you know, market cap when you split the stock, this and that, but the psychology and capital intensiveness mm -hmm. is always different. That's why we got so bullish on Apple when it did the seven for one. Right. Look what I do. It wouldn't be a 2020 if it didn't split 10 for one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and how about Tesla? Nice gap and go yesterday. Looks like it's poised to touch 300 soon. Yep, and the price target yesterday was 400. Right. So why not 300? Right. I sold it yesterday, probably a little early, but that's what I do. I take my money a little early. <laughs> Got to get a little bit riskier in my older age versus not. Anyway, lots of nice little spots right here. This one broke above the prior pivot. Strong day yesterday, up three dollars or so this morning. You know, here's 300. Maybe you trim a little bit. Just because it's extended doesn't mean it's a short. Okay. Um, so at this point, if you're flat, it maybe you get an intraday pattern. Yesterday, if you came in flat, there was still that intraday pattern right there. If you remember, we talked about it in the recap. Gapped up, went sideways. You had a, a move where you could have bought 270 and then it you know, continued higher. So with that being said, or sorry, 280, um, there might be one of those today. Just don't overthink it or overdo it because it is extended. All right, and now let's do a couple quick hits. Let's check in on social media stocks like Twitter and Facebook as they remain active. And Facebook looks poised to potentially open at all-time highs. Yes, and what did we say last week? Probably the new, the new highs weren't in, you know, <laughs> yeah. on that downgrade. And, uh, you know, woke up. You look at the chart, and old Red Dog on that downgrade said, I would have got away from Facebook and said, oh, I can't believe I had all of this stock on this day. If you remember that day, we all got blindsided by the bear downgrade and that happened. So I did get out of it that day, got back involved on this day, added yesterday, and now we're opening above 52 week highs. Imagine that, even after the downgrade. That's why I tried to just give some people conviction. But anyway, I'll trim and trail into the open, but then I'm gonna try and stay with some, especially if it holds and closes above 76, 74. Twitter, been unbelievable, you know, on the move. You know, it went above the earnings day high well before Facebook. Um, we talked about the resistance uh, that could pause the stock, and that comes in a little bit closer to 54. So it's almost there. Really nice stock since the earnings gap also. And a quick metals check as well as gold got hit hard yesterday. And obviously, if you watch the morning call, you know Scott's not too optimistic about gold opportunities in gold. And looks like that pessimism at least paid off yesterday. Well, you know, as a trader, there are some things that at least, you know, play to your strengths. And some things that play to my weaknesses is if something's erratic, if something's random, and most of the move happens overnight. So that's three things I don't like about a trade that I'm in, and that's what gold has been, mm -hmm. and that's why I've been avoiding it. Sometimes intraday I try or whatever, but anyway, yesterday, you know, big gap down. If you were in it, I, I'm sorry for you, you know. Overall, this pattern, you know, this is when everyone got bullish on gold. I hate, you know, some people are claiming that they were so bullish on gold to start 2014. I think most got bullish here, and from there, it's just been, you know, pretty much a disaster. So, whatever. This is your point of reference, 121.43. It's a little bit above it. Maybe it tries to fill the gap, but overall, not worth your time. All right, then. So, what are your closing thoughts as we get ready to begin today's trading session? Um, just real quick, that Morgan Stanley yesterday put a, a note out saying the S&P could hit S&P 3000 by 2020. And right away, people were like, that's irresponsible. What are they, perma bulls? They're just trying to build their business. You know, but if you think about it, you know, 2020, S&P 3000 is really just 8% a year. And if you look back at the last 30 years, we've probably averaged 7 to 8%. So it's not bad for someone to come out positive and say, listen, put together a plan. You're not too late. You could still make money over the next decade instead of just thinking you missed everything and, start and call a 15 to 20 to 25% correction like most newspapers or headlines or media outlets try and do to get page views. So I still think there is time to get a plan. I think you could do it on multiple time frames depending on how much time you want to put in. And um, I'm not a permeable. I'm, you know, glass half full. I think long term you have a plan and intermediate you have your rules to try and, you know, generate some alpha cash flow and a living. <laughs> and watch the morning call and go to the VTF and, and do all the fun here. things that could help and give you resources exactly. to, to give you conviction with their own ideas. Because really, the way they make money is with their own ideas that match ours. They can't just, you know, think we're going to be throwing fish in their boat every single day and right. think they could eat forever. Well, and with that said, happy trading, everyone. Have a great day.